Uh, welcome to uh, this evening's event where by we're going to all together try to address the problem of the recently passed legislation which treats all 17 year olds as adults. Um, I'm just going to say a, a remark or two about that. I'm going to then pass the mic around so the other panelists can introduce themselves uh, their affiliations and what brings them here and then we'll we'll start hearing from the six people Sol referred to and anybody else who wants to comment um, uh, briefly. I think most of us are on the same page but not necessarily so and uh, be interesting to hear some of the uh, dialogue. Uh, my primary concern as I'm sure it is with uh, some of you who are familiar with the criminal justice system is that what the legislature did was uh, address a problem that in its own way had already been solved. Namely, what to do about certain youthful offenders who commit especially heinous crimes. Uh, there already was on the books uh, a law that would permit a situation like that to go through a hearing, to have the young person go through a hearing and then a determination would be made in the family court as to whether that person would then be tried as an adult. If the crime was especially uh, vicious and the person, uh, according a, after a hearing, uh, supposedly had no chance of rehabilitation. That system itself was also open to criticism, but nonetheless it did what we try to do in this uh, society is have an individualized notion of justice. However, now, in order to supposedly save money with one stroke of the a pen and a few votes from the legislators, the governor has signed into law this very harsh situation, this very harsh law which treats the shoplifter like the murderer, all 17-year-olds into one bucket. And once again, it's no secret the people who catch it mostly on the chin are the communities of color. So no, nobody has to uh, look too far to figure that out, but that's exactly what uh, happened. You people and myself and anybody else who cares about civil rights and, and social justice in this country face a fight. You know, it wasn't so long ago, it wasn't so long ago that many states in this country were, ex, uh, were executing juveniles for capital offenses, and it was only a few years ago that the Supreme Court said that they had to stop executing retarded people. So there's a, there's a culture out there, uh, happily uh, uh, not as bad in Rhode Island as elsewhere, but still with some problems in Rhode Island that have to be addressed, and that, that's why we're happy you folks are here this evening. I'll pass the uh, mic to the uh, extreme left of the table, and then we'll just bring it up here quickly, and then we'll uh, get the program underway. Uh, hi, my name is Ulu, and I'm from Youth in Action. My name is Cedric Huntley, and I'm representing South Providence Rec, and also uh, the Met School. My name is Angie Lovegrove. I'm with the Rhode Island Commission for Human Rights. Uh, Burke Rink, uh, AS20 Broad Street Studio, and uh, Providence School Board. I am Alan Jacobson. I am a psychologist, and I run the Child and Family Programs at the Providence Center. Hi, I'm Sakina Abdul Rashid, and I'm representing PEAK, which is Providence Educational Excellence Coalition. All right, uh, thank you. Um, Sol Rodriguez will now call some of the people forward.